Hello guys, welcome to the channel. I am at the Delapre Food Festival in Northampton and I will be giving a chef demo here at three o'clock, which is in about 40 minutes. So I'm just having a quick look around this food festival. The weather is absolutely stunning. I'm gonna be doing a hot smoked salmon. I hope you enjoy the video. I'll catch up with you at the end. Well, that was the Delapre Food Festival. Fantastic. Now, that used to be held in Toaster and they moved it over to the Delapre Abbey site in Northampton. It was really fantastic. If ever you get a chance to go and visit the Abbey, if ever you're in that particular area, it's an interesting visit. Right, anyway, the demonstration I did was focused on a wonderful piece of hot smoked salmon on a beetroot and cauliflower salad on a bed of pickled cucumber. Now, that was a really nice dish. Um, the video does go on a little bit because I talk about a lot of other things. Now, if you're interested in the video of making that particular smoked salmon dish, then I have created a, a video a little while ago, and uh, that's at the end of the video. There'll be a timestamp up here for that. And um, whilst I was actually doing the demonstration, I did talk to Katie about a few other bits and pieces. So I talked a little bit about my previous fire service career. If uh, you don't know that I used to be in the fire service in London and, um, and I, I served there for just over 30 years. And I also talked about some of the TV work that the cookery school has been involved in. And uh, there's also a timestamp for that too. Uh, if you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and um, I will catch up with you at the end. Take care. Bye for now. Next gentleman, or the last gentleman, is named Turan Turan and uh, he used to be a fireman and he was a commander. He was you know, way up in London Fire Brigade. And then we first met oof, several years ago and he was doing smoking and I couldn't get over the link that used to be a fireman and now he's still working with fire. And I used to say, why on earth don't you wear your uniform? Because it's a big thing, you know. Guess what, he's got it on now. You can come out. You've got this place to put a seat. He's done this express before us. Look at him, Gerard, Gerard, this is a new stress. Hello, everyone. Is it? Has anyone reported fire? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> but that is your original... Yeah, so this is one of my original helmets from 1984. Um, obviously, nowadays, the helmets are really modern. Yeah. They've got internal visors. They're made of fiberglass and carbon fibre. And they've got the cameras in them, and torches, and all sorts of interesting stuff. Because so that is really quite basic, that pack, is, isn't it? Proper, if you say it, or helmet, I should say. Proper old school, this. So this would be a sort of service as um, it, it, the reasons for the way it's shaped. Well, over. the reason it's like this, I mean, this isn't to show this comb on the top. That's to stop tiles going through your head when you're at a fire. Um, this little sweep at the back here is so that all the debris gets thrown off and uh, don't hurt you basically, they hurt the guy behind you. Yeah. So. And this is your ceremonial So this, jacket. yeah, so this one hasn't actually seen fire, this was in my locker, all kept nice and tidy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, otherwise it'd be a bit smelly. But you wore yeah. the same when you were doing the fire? Yes, so this is my fire kit when I first started in 1984, 20 wow. years ago. Great. So I retired so 10 feel, years ago. I so. suddenly feel really, really young. <laughs> Thank you so much for wearing that. Well, I'm going to just... take this off because I'll be cooking myself if I keep Bless it. Bless him, it's fantastic to, to wear that. Oh, that's better. a little that's bit better. better. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the link from the fire fighting 
to the smoking. Were you doing this whilst you were a fireman? So I used to do this as a hobby. So I used to cure my own salamis and make my own smoked salmon and all sorts of things like that. Whilst you were working? Whilst I was working. Yeah. Not at the same time, not at the same <laughs> yes. time. I mean, you know. While we're here, let's just bring some salmon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hang that up, keep the fire going for a bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, we don't do that. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> Not very professional, but I did it as a hobby. And then when I retired, someone said, um, would you run some classes for us? And uh, it was the Low Impact Living Initiative, and they're based in Winslow, in Buckinghamshire. And I ran a course for them at Hackney City Farm in North London, and it went down really well. Anyway, cut a long story short, we ended up having our own cookery school in Milton Keynes, up until good old Covid. And then that stopped, and we went on to YouTube. So we've now got a YouTube channel, we've got 6,000 subscribers, doing a few more. Okay. Uh, it's called Smoking Digital Cookery School, if you do YouTube. We do food smoking, meat curing, charcuterie, I do a little bit of sea fishing as well. And um, it's all on video. So. Brilliant, okay, right. What you are doing now, so this is obviously going to go on, <laughs> what are you going to do for us? So I'm going to cook you a hot smoked salmon. So I have a fillet of salmon here. I'm going to hot smoke it and it's going to be in a beetroot salad. So I've got some balsamic infused beetroot cubes here, which I've prepared ahead of time. With also some um, cauliflower, with a bit, and this is a sort of very, very small florets of cauliflower in a creme fresh and horseradish sauce. So that's really nice. They're going to be served on some ribbons of cucumber with some of my very own cider vinegar, which has been infused with some fresh dill. Okay, and uh, if anyone wants to come up and taste the hot snack salad, salad at the end, I'm going to be serving on some baby gem lettuces. So I'll put it all on the You've changed. Once a fire fighter, now you're a fantasy. Yes, please. I know. And if everything, if, if it doesn't get cooked properly, that's I'm channeling my inner fire safety officer. Because we're going to make a bit of smoke today. All right. So. Yeah, yeah. First things first. Well, I've got this salmon, and, and this is a, about a seven or eight hundred gram piece of salmon. It's going to fit inside our little hot smoker. I'll talk to you about that in a second. But this isn't fresh salmon. I have actually brined this. So we go through a brining process before we actually cook it. And uh, I've infused this in a brine for about 30 minutes. And the brine's made up of very simple, one litre of water, 100 grams of salt. Get it all dissolved, pump that in, flesh side down, okay? Salmon, things float in brine very well. So it will just bob out the top and none of that will get brine. So skin side up, that goes in the brine for half an hour. And then it comes out and uh, it goes in this bag ready for today. So we're now gonna pop this in here. So you, you wouldn't smoke fresh salmon then? You, you, everything yeah. has to be a, a processed Yeah, fish. there's a, so fish like salmon, mackerel have a lot of fat in them and when you, when you combine fat and salt and smoke, you get this beautiful sort of trilogy of loveliness going on. So there's a nice relationship, you know, salt is a, um, a flavour enhancer as well, so it, it actually adds to the flavour. But it also extracts a little bit of moisture from the fish, it puts in a little bit of brine and believe it or not it makes it a little bit more kind of juicy. Okay. So that's right. something that I think is really important. So let me show you what I'm going to use. I've got this uh, pot smoker here. Now this is a Cameron's stove top smoker. I'm going to be using it on this gas stove here and I'm going to be using some apple chips. So this is apple wood chips. And we've got a website and we sell these, but I wouldn't want you to go out and spend, I mean, one of these is about sort of 45, 50 quid. So we don't want everyone to go out and spend too much money on that. I'll show you a cheap little hack how you can get around this at home with a couple of roasting trays. I think it's one of these things you want to see if you like it and want to do it. And yeah. So it's good to yeah. have something to test on and then you can build up to a proper. So we've got about 
two tablespoons of wood chips in there. You don't need to put them all over the base. We just really want the wood chips over where the flame's going to come. And uh, then we've got this little tray which holds the food. We'll pop that in there, stick that on there. I'll get this ready to close the lid. So here we go, there's our salmon in there. I don't know if you can see that. Put it under there, you'll see that there. Now that's going to go straight on the stove, so we'll get that lit. Don't get your hand over. Okay, so as soon as I see some smoke coming from that, we're going to close that up and we'll get the rest of the dish prepared. Okay, so what's going to happen is those chips are going to heat up from the gas. That's going to start decomposing that wood, creating some smoke. Also the heat that's going into here is going to cook the salmon as well. So essentially it's going to be cooking in all its juices and, uh, and we'll end up with a beautiful smoked salmon at the end of it. So the reason you chose apple, because I guess you could get all sorts of chips, can you? Yeah, so we do a wide variety. We do uh, whiskey oak, which is made from whiskey oak barrels. We've got hickory, apple, nice. peach, sweet yeah. chestnut. The range is quite extensive. Cherry, yeah, really nice. Maple, you know, it goes on. <laughs> So I'm just waiting for this to start smoking and just see a whisk of smoke coming there. Right, so we'll close that now. Check the watch and pass. I reckon in about 10 minutes we'll check this. But it doesn't really take too long. And the one thing we don't really want to do with fish is overcook it. So that's now going. What I'll do now is I'll just quickly tell you how you can create your own hot smoker at home. So I've got here two roasting trays. And, and these are just ordinary roasting trays. You can see that they've got a lip on the edge, that's important. And inside one of these, I've got a drip tray and a food rack. And these are quite common, you can get these from most cookware shops. And basically, you put your wood chips in the base there, stick that down, Put your fish on there, pop that on your stove, put the other lid on top there, and then you can get some of these bulldog clips, uh, nip them from work, they're on the notice board, no one will know. And that just holds those, I'm not, I'm not advocating to see them. <laughs> and um, I, I didn't get mine from the notice board, honestly. Right, they just sit there, secure it so that it holds it all together, holds the heat inside, and that will cost 20 quid, there or thereabouts, and you've got yourself a hot smoker. And I've been using this one for over 12 years, so I still use it today. And uh, if I show you the base of this one. I saw that as it went down. Yeah, I know, it's got cracks in it and all yeah, sorts, yeah. so that's properly used. And I still use it, and it still works. So if you're still using after 12 years, why have you got a caution? Well, because I like gadgets and also some people out there like gadgets as well. So they like to see this stuff. And they do, cameras do a bigger one than this. It's about twice the size and that's a another stove top and smoker. And you can just get more stuff in it. So it's a useful bit of kit yeah. to have. Okay. But yeah, it's a nice bit of kit. It's about the size of one of those army mess tins. And it's, uh, it's a very easy piece of kit to carry around. A lot of fishermen have these, and they go fishing and catch some trout, fillet them off and grind them, and then pop them straight into that and have it by the riverbank. Very nice. Right, so uh, we are going to do a little bit of uh, chefy stuff now. So this is my cider vinegar, which has been infused with dill. Now. I can actually say everything in here is from my garden. Because I tried making cider once and it turned into apple vinegar. <laughs> and the dill's from my garden. Okay. So that's going to go into a bowl there. And what we're going to do is we're going to shave some cucumber ribbons. And, um, and those cucumber ribbons are going to have a little bit of acidity when they're put to the dish. And it gives it a really nice flavour. So we've... Uh, 
pre-prepped everything here. I think that's the key to success, isn't it? Just getting everything prepped. And uh, I will take some of these ribbons. Don't need those anymore. And we'll, we'll just create some nice little ribbons. Just going back to the fish you're smoking then. Yes. So we know we have to buy it. Yes. And we have mentioned salmon being an oily fish. Yes. So does that mean you could you could um, smoke a mackerel then? Yes. Is it all going to be oily or can you do a, like a, just a white fish? So you can smoke white fish and it's fine. It doesn't have to be oily. I just think when you smoke fish that is oily, you get a really, really good result. And uh, if anyone out there has ever had smoked mackerel, you'll know exactly what I mean. It's got that That's nice beautiful. sort of unctuous flavour to it. It's got a lot of depth to it. But um, yeah, you can you can uh, hot smoke pollock, you can hot smoke cod. And to be fair, you know, you go out and spend a lot of money buying smoked haddock. I've got some pollock in my fridge which we caught from Weymouth um, earlier this year. I can't tell the difference between that smoked pollock and smoked yeah, haddock yeah. Uh, in a fish pie that's absolutely amazing. So yeah, it's a, it's a sort of an undersold fish as well, pollock. Mm. But I would, uh, I would recommend that to anybody. So can right. you smoke most things, John? Uh, pretty much, yeah, yeah. And I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it off. But yeah, yeah, we do, um, so we smoke some, we do smoke some weird stuff. I think the weirdest thing I've ever smoked is chocolate. No. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah smoked chocolate. Now, with that in mind then, and you're saying about having fat on it, is it a white chocolate? Because that's obviously got more fat content. I guess it would do. I haven't actually smoked white chocolate. Okay. But I guess it would work. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Right, here's our ribbons. They're coming out really nicely. There's potato peeler, very easy to do, very consistent, you can do that at home and people do for a chef. And uh, we'll just put these into our uh, light pickle and, uh, and that should be good to go. And I like using this apple vinegar because it's, it's, it's actually good enough for cream. It's really, really nice. It's about six years old. So I feed it occasionally with some fresh cider when I, when I try and make some, when I have a successful batch. And uh, I just keep it alive. So here are our ribbons of uh, cucumber. And I'm just going to pop those into here. You don't want to keep these in here for too long because they will cook. And uh, they, because they're so thin, they actually do take that pickle really, really well. So we get them in there, we'll turn them over. What doesn't work smoking? Um, most things do work, to be fair. But having said that, don't think you're ever going to turn a bad piece of fish into a good piece of fish or a bad piece of meat into a good piece of meat just because you're putting smoke on it. I think you have to start with a good product start with a good product, you'll end with a good product. Well, a better product, let's say, because it's got some smoke on it. But that's pretty much the view that I take. And is the fresher the product better? So thinking fish in particular? Uh, yeah, yeah, I always like to use fresh fish if I can. Um, it's Obviously it's very difficult getting fresh salmon nowadays. Most of it's farmed. Um, you can get some really good quality uh, Try and turn this gas up. Yeah. We might, yeah. Let's get this far on there. Well, that's a bit better. So you can also pop this on a barbecue as well. But you actually need to sit that directly on the charcoal so you get that heat contact between the base and the charcoal because you need that energy coming through there to not only cook the food, but also sort of decompose the wood so it creates that smoke, otherwise it's just not going to work. Yeah. yeah, so start with good food, and the better food. Um, right, we do have some florets of cucumber. Now, these, these florets are... Cauliflower. 
call it now. Thank you. You are not even out my prompts. <laughs> Anyway, so I, yeah, right. so I start with the beetroot. So I'm quite confident with the beetroot. So this is balsamic infused cubes of beetroot. And uh, beetroot and salmon go really well together. Not just taste wise but visually as well. So they look really good. So we'll get those out, we'll get these out. Um, if you do want to come up and have a little bit of a taste afterwards, what I will do, I have here, some little gem lettuces and uh, I'll try and arrange this so that we can have some smoked salmon we'll have a bit of everything on these and then you can help yourself what was smoked salmon and, and baby gem lettuce from uh, Waitrose you, you've really gone bust you are living the dream you are. living the dream do you still keep in touch with your, your fellow firefighters I do I do occasionally yeah so we've got a get together later this month over at Hillingdon Fire Station and they uh, they normally put a bit of a spread on for us and that's that's always nice to do because I've I've been retired for 10 years now and um, like we were saying earlier, it, I joined 40 years ago, and it seems like yesterday. Does it? Yeah, it absolutely does. But um, yeah, going back and seeing all my old colleagues, it's uh, it's quite interesting. So I started off at I did all my training at Southwark Fire Station, uh, which used to be our central training centre. Um, if I tell you now, it's flat. I don't think you'll be surprised. <laughs> You know, central London piece of uh, real estate like that it doesn't stay a fire brigade training centre for a long time. So that's now flats. My first fire station was Hillingdon in West London, and uh, I stayed there for a year. I then moved to Keston Fire Station, which is in Isleworth, and I served there for nine years. And uh, I was actually on the Hampton Court fire. When, oh, it, wow. when it caught fire, yeah. that was the first first of March 1986. Quite a few of you were born when that happened. So that, that, that stayed with you that day. Yeah, it did. Well, because I was there for 12 hours. It's the hardest day's work I think I've ever put in. Yeah, that's that, that was it. So from Heston, I then did a, a spell of temporary promotion to leading firefighter for another few years. And uh, in 1995, I got promoted to leading firefighter. And within six years from that, I was a divisional commander in the London Fire Brigade. I was based at headquarters. I was doing a lot of strategic work. Very, very boring. I was going to say, did you miss the hands on? Oh, oh. God, yeah, absolutely. Isn't that sad that they take away experienced people just... Well, you know, they've got to have experienced people running the job, to yeah. be fair. So you need that experience from a command perspective as well. Mm. <laughs> he didn't think he was going to get this from the kids today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind sharing it though, because it is, you know, that's a part of me. Right, I think that's pretty much... So what are you looking nearly for? Done. So, let me open it and show you. So, if you look at that, I'll just take it off the heat for now. You're looking for it to be um, not raw, obviously. <laughs> but what we'll do is we'll just open the flakes up a bit, and you can see that still needs a bit of work, okay? So, can you see that then, all right? Yeah. Yeah, so that still needs a little bit there. Mm -hmm. So, what we'll do is we'll pop it back on. It's all right for time, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thinking, please don't set that tea cloth on fire. No, that would be really embarrassing. <laughs> How do you know what you're doing? I can deal with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went from headquarters to I did a bit of time borough commander over in Enfield, North London. I was there for a while, and I ended my career as station commander over in Ely, um, in West London. I spent actually some of my formative years as a watch commander and a sub officer at Wembley, Wembley Fire Station. And I was there during uh, the Euros in 1996. And uh, I've been an event commander for Take That over at Wembley um, and all sorts of interesting stuff. Some of the internationals that I used to go to, 
um, as, a, as a commander. They, they have all the main services looking after your safety behind the scenes that you don't even know about. And people like me are up in a big control room with lots of televisions, looking at the crowd, making sure that there's no incidents going on, making sure the pyrotechnics, the old pop stars use, don't set fire to people, doing safety inspections and the walk around and all that sort of boring stuff. People well, take that sound really like my fire, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. I, I obviously didn't oblige, but, but yeah, all that stuff's really interesting, but my real passion was food, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I started off making smoked salmon because my dad, who was in the catering industry, um, that's where my name comes from. My name's Tarang, it's a Turkish name. Um, my dad was in the food industry uh, for years and years and years, and he loved smoked salmon. And he had a real trouble getting hold of good smoked salmon regularly. So I thought, you know, dutiful son, have a go at making it, had a few major disasters had a few successes and uh, as a result of that I thought this is the hobby for me. So that was the first thing you did? Smoked salmon? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's going from 0 to 16. Yeah, tell me yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of the mistakes I made were literally sort of crashing into a brick wall yeah. at high speed. So if we are going to smoke, what are those things with all the pitfalls and you like? So, make sure that the wood you're using is food grade. A lot of people think you can burn sort of wood from any yeah, source. Yeah, no, absolutely not. So make sure it's from a good source. Um, it is suitable for food grade. Um, one of the rules of thumb that I use is that if you can eat the fruit from the tree, uh, or it is eaten, with a few exceptions, you're pretty safe to go. So, for instance, apple, plum, cherry, all those sorts of woods are really good. So these are our florets of, um, oh, what's it again? <laughs> oh, flower, that's right. Well done. Glad you have it all full in the seat. Don't worry, I'll start on fire safety in a minute. You'll be out in a blue. We'll sleep. So yeah, these are in a creme fraiche and horseradish sauce. So if you uh, don't like creme fraiche or horseradish, uh, there's a bin on there. Okay. So what we're doing now is I turned the salmon off. I'm just waiting for that to cook through and, um, and we'll be pretty ready to go, I think. So yeah, but um, getting back to smoking, we, we actually smoke our own bacon, so we make Pure our own bacon. Uh, we've got loads of videos on the channel which show you how to smoke your own food, cure your own bacon, and um, and it's doing really well. We've got 6,000 subscribers. We used to have a cookery school in Milton Keynes, and uh, and that was really good. So we used to run all sorts of courses. So we even used to run a pasta course where Carmela, who was on earlier, used to come and teach. We had cheese making classes going on and uh, all manner of different classes. We had a chocolatier who used to visit us. We had a guy that used to ferment his own food, come and teach lessons. And it was absolutely brilliant. And we ran that for six years. Thanks to COVID, we ended up closing the cookery school, refunding all our customers. And we did a bit of TV work with Nadia Hussain. And a bit for Jamie, I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, Nadia Hussain came and spent a whole day with us, and um, I've never, that's the first time I've ever done TV yet. And it was a real kind of uh, <coughs> baptism by fire and, and smoke, obviously. But we taught her how to cold smoke paddock, and, um, and that, was, that was really interesting because um, I had to go and buy the haddock. And if you've ever done anything with TV people, they are, I think it's a qualification that you have to have OCD and they were so OCD, they wanted to see the, the and they do everything like back to front so I had to have one that's already smoked, one that's already brined, one fresh one and they all needed to look the same. So I had to go to the fish markers and say can I have three sides of haddock? But uh, can they all be the same looking? Can they all be the same size? Luckily, he opened this box of haddock and he ended up taking out um, all these fish. And um, 
and they all looked identical. So I ended up taking them away with me, all the, all the left hand side fillets I think it was. Yeah. And those videos are still on the internet, so yeah, really, that was really good. And I, I did some work with Jamie Oliver when he had his 15 restaurant, and I was teaching his chefs how to smoke food. We did a whole variety of different foods, so we did, um, we did things from hot smoked fish, right way through to a, a really sort of broad series of different vegetables and, and that was a really nice thing to do as well so yeah we've, we've been out there and we've You've been around doing a bit yeah i even taught when i don't know if any of you saw the victorian slum that was a few yeah that was that was a television program a few years ago we got called in to consult because uh, environmental health closed them down when they were trying to cure and smoke kickers because they weren't doing it properly. <laughs> so I got a telephone call and we went down on the hurry up and um, had to teach them and show, teach them how to make kickers and we, uh, we ended up being there for the whole day so it was really good. Yeah, so let's have a look at our salmon. Yeah. So there is our salmon and you can see the smoke residue in there. That's very hot. I'm just going to allow that to cool down a bit. Now, ordinarily, I would take that out and I would let that chill until it was all solidified. Now, I did say that salmon's got a lot of oil in it. When oil chills, it solidifies and it makes the whole fish a lot easier to break apart. So it can be a little bit tricky. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to see if I can So I might actually just take that out and uh, pop that on my board. Right, so. Just while it's sitting in there, I'm obviously going to remove it. Do you, do you clean these things? Or do you leave them because it adds to the... I clean them all the time, yeah. I think Alice is shaking her. She's shaking her head because actually it's Alice and the cleans. But all this stuff is, um, it goes straight in the dishwasher and uh, it's all dishwasher proof, comes out really nicely oh, yeah. and it's, it's as good as new. I don't know why I thought maybe it would have to be carried on, especially if you change the burnt chips. It's going to affect the flavour if you leave it dirty. Yeah, not only that, I mean, because I, I come from this sort of heritage of uh, cookery school, when I get new customers through the door, I like all my kit to look like nice and clean because it's sort of that's your first impression really. So I just like to, uh, to do that. That's my OC. Yeah. Right, so here's our salmon and uh, you can see it's got a really nice colour on that. That looks beautiful. And I'm just, because it's still got the skin on, hoping that I can take it off without it sticking. A little bit of a test. I can take my time. Play with me, folks. This can be a bit tricky. So we just want to get a knife under there. If she does stick, the reason is what? Is it? Well, temperature it, or something? It, no, it's just it's just a symptom of the fact that it's a uh, it's. There's no oil on this rack. Uh, you can oil it first, but it does stick sometimes. When it cools, that comes off quite easily. So that's it. That will do. So I'll just flip that over like that. And you can see here, I'll move that over there. Put that down there. You can see that just break apart. What we'll do is we'll just smoked salmon there and we'll do a lovely smoked mashed potato so what we'll do for instance there is we will parboil a load of potatoes pop them in a hot smoker like this same setup same wood smoked potatoes bring them back out when they're smoked so by that time they should be fully ready uh, to turn into a mash loads of butter dribble of cream and then you've got a lovely smoked mashed potato 
Generally, I would say if you're going to use one of these, I use one of those camping stoves and take it outside. Because I think even if you have a really, really good extractor fan in the kitchen, this is going to fire safety off the time again. <laughs> right, okay, even if you have a really good extractor fan, your kitchen will stink of fish and smoke. So you really want to take that outside if you can, okay? So I generally uh, use my camping stove outside, uh, otherwise Alison turns me off all the time when I get things wrong. So that's that's our hot smoked salmon. It's always fascinating. He always gets lots of people coming to chat to him. And they has got the channel, but it's nice when you chat one on one. It is, I love it. And I, believe it or not, I get loads and loads of comments. And I, I really do, I, I do start to treat it a bit like a job, this YouTube stuff because I really do like to engage with the people that watch my videos. So if anyone asks me a question on the channel, I, I sort of almost feel obliged to try and answer. I think that's nice. Yeah, and it's not everyone does that. Sorry? Yeah, so the channel is Cold Smoking Digital Cookery School. So, yeah, search it on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Is that what I say? <laughs> I think I say it on every yeah, bloody video. Yeah. <laughs> but there we go. If anyone wants to come up and try this yeah. afterwards, then we can. I'll just put some of this salmon here. And also, come and chat to him because it's uh, there's no real rush because it was the last one. So um, we're, we're in no hurry to get away. We'll so if anyone wants to and to the come and ask him all sorts of questions. Yeah, I know we'll always people always do. Yeah. Yeah, they do, they do. So we're up at Ludlow as well this year, later this year. Yeah. But, uh, Ludlow Food Festival, we've never been, it's the UK's first ever food festival. Amazing. And this year she's 30 years old. So uh, Ludlow's in Shropshire, if you're not sure. It's a fantastic um, day out. Two hours from here, yeah, 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 it's about that. Yeah. But, um, and it's in a castle, it's in a uh, medieval castle grounds. It's, um, Oh, it's a stunning place if you've never been. But I think food festivals are, are great. People love coming out to food festivals. You know, I mean, I was watching earlier and seeing some of the stuff that's going on, and it's really inspiring. So I get ideas for videos, and yeah, yeah, yeah you touch base with some other chefs, and it kind of sparks an idea, and you think, yeah, I don't know what, if I put a little twist on that, yeah. I can make uh, make that for like a. Uh, so I did. So one of I. I went out for a meal with some mates a little while ago and one of the guys was going on about chicken parma. I don't know if any of you have ever had a chicken parma. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So it's basically, alright, so for the foodies amongst you, it's like a chicken milanese. So it's a breaded chicken, butterfly chicken breast. Okay, it's pan-aid. It's, it's fried, sometimes deep fried, but I shallow fried mine. And then you sort of make a bechamel sauce with some parmesan and put it on there. I thought that's great, but I could make that better if I added some smoke to it. And I ended up making a, a, um, a smoked chicken parma. And I, I smoked the chicken, I also smoked the bechamel sauce, I smoked the parmesan, I even smoked the butter, I made the bechamel. Yeah, individually, and it was absolutely stunning. Very nice. <laughs> you can't do that, you still fit in that place. Really. Yeah, I didn't eat for six months, so I could fit into it. But yeah, I think they stretch. <laughs> but yeah, so I did a smoked chicken parmo, which is a, a teaside classic, I think they call it. But yeah, a really nice thing it was. Yeah. Brilliant. But yeah, there we go. Well, what we'll do, we'll say thank you, and then we'll take your sound off and hope you come up and see you. Uh, but for now, ladies and gentlemen, a huge thank you. 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 Yeah, let me just set up camera. So, chicken breast or duck breast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do the same with both. 
It's Cold Smoking Digital Cookery School. I've just found it. It's easy to find. Have you found it? Oh, yeah. great. Good. I, I saw you at another demo pre-COVID. I don't know what happened. Oh, did you? Oh, really? Oh, good. I'm glad. Just tell me the name of it. Cold Smoking Digital Cookery School. If you search my name, Taran, it should come up. Oh, yeah, you're all right. Would you like to try some? There you go. I'll have my fourth pack. Pop it in. Speech. What was that like? Just just one thumb. That was really good to watch. Thank you. Oh, cheers. Oh, yeah, you're right. Do you want one? One left. Try it with a little bit of uh, try it with a little bit of beef. So this has got balsamic on it.
Well, I hope you liked the video. I know it was quite long, but I wanted to include it because there are some bits in that video which I don't really get an opportunity to talk about very often. So it's nice to be able to have something that lets people see a little bit closer into some of the stuff that we do and our journey. Anyway, if you did like it, consider giving us a thumbs up. Leave your comments in the comments section. It's always nice to read them and I always respond to them. Well, in the meantime, folks, take care of yourselves and I will see you on the next Smoky video. Bye.